Hello guys, so in this video I'm going to explain to you the semaphores in C-sharp. So, um, firstly, I will just explain to you what are the semaphores in C-sharp, then I will tell you the difference between a semaphore slim class and semaphore in C-sharp, and then I will show you the examples of semaphore slim and semaphore in C-sharp. So, what are the semaphores in C-sharp? Semaphores are used to limit the number of threads that can access a resource or pool of resources concurrently. So we have a multi-threaded application where many threads are working concurrently at the same time, and we have a limited, uh, and we have to limit the access to a resource or pool of resources because they um, cannot. Um, they can only be accessed by, for example, two or three threads, and we have to limit that. That's what these semaphores are used for. So, uh, what is the difference between semaphore slim and semaphore class in C sharp? Semaphore slim works inside the process, and semaphore works or can work system wide using named semaphores. So, um, anytime you're only concerned about your own application, your own process, use semaphore slim. And if you need to manage the access to a resource system-wide, then use semaphore class and, and named semaphores. Let's see how we can use both of these classes in practice um, in C Sharp. So here we have a very basic, simple console application where I'm going to show you how to use semaphore slim and semaphore in C Sharp. So here is the static void main method uh, where I invoke Firstly, the semaphore slim test method, and then I use the console read line to block the console window from automatically closing. So let's see what's inside of the semaphore slim test method. It is a private static method which returns void. And here we have the initialization of semaphore variable. We use the constructor new semaphore slim, passing in two arguments, so two and two. The first arg argument is initial count, uh, which means how many threads can enter um, this semaphore initially, and then it's the maximum count. So uh, what's the maximal amount of threads that, that can access the semaphore? Then we have the for loop from a 0 to 2, so there will be three iterations. Each iteration creates a separate thread using task.run. And inside of the method, uh, inside of the task, we are using uh, console write line three times just to log the events. So the first log is task uh, zero, task awaits. So here under the zero, we're going to pass the task current ID, so the ID of the task. Then we use the semaphore.wait. We use this method to try to access the semaphore if there is a place a space available and if the semaphore is full we will wait until until um, it's, uh, it's there is a place to enter so after that i'm using console write line to output the message that task current id enters the semaphore after that i'm using thread.sleep just to simulate a, a um, any operation so it will just block the thread for a given amount of milliseconds so it's thousand milliseconds which is basically a second times task.current id plus one so uh, if the current id is one it will be two times one it will be times thousand milliseconds it will be two thousand milliseconds and in the end it will be just two seconds right so um I use it just to make each um, each task per, um, perform the operations for a different time because it will make the output more clear, and more more easy to read. Um, then I will output the message task current ID releases the, sem the semaphore, and I will invoke the semaphore.release method to release the semaphore. So uh, let's see how it looks like when I run the application. So after we see the output, I'm going to interpret what we see. Um, all right, so we start by just waiting. So uh, we have three tasks. 
tasks one weights, tasks three weights, then the task one enters the semaphore because there is a space available, task two waits, and then task three enters the semaphore, then task one releases the semaphore, making room for task two to enter the semaphore, and then task three releases the semaphore and task two releases the semaphore. So basically, at each moment, there were maximally two tasks entering the semaphore, and after one task released the semaphore, the another task, which have awaited for this space, goes into the semaphore. So that's basically how semaphore slim uh, code looks like and performs. So um, let's uh, see what we can do with the semaphore test, so the semaphore class. Um, it is a very, very similar uh, private static method returning by semaphore test. So instead of instantiating semaphore slim, we are using new semaphore right now. The parameters are the same. Uh, so we have two, um, two threads available initially, two threads available uh, maximally, and then we have the system uh, name for this semaphore. So I use system semaphore as a name for this semaphore, and it can be used to reach this semaphore outside of this process. Because as I have mentioned before, we use semaphore to manage access to resources across many different processes. So here we have a very similar for loop from 0 to 2, so there will be three iterations, new thread, we log uh, tasks waiting, we use the semaphore.wait1 to try to access the semaphore if there is space available, another uh, log uh, logging the, um, the event of entering the semaphore, we use the thread slip to simulate the um, the operation, and then we log the release of the semaphore, and invoke the semaphore dot release to release the semaphore. So it basically looks the same. The constructor is different. We provide the uh, the name also, which is not available in the semaphore slim, and we use wait one method instead of wait method. And in the end, the output should be basically the same. So let's see how it looks like. So as you can see, task 2 waits, task, task 3 waits, task 1 waits, then task 2 enters, task 3 enters. Um, after the operation of task 2 is completed, it releases the semaphore, which makes space for task 1 to enter the semaphore, and then task 3 releases the, sem the semaphore and task one releases the semaphore. So basically, it's, it works um, the same as uh, semaphore slim. So um, this is the basics of, uh, of using semaphores in C Sharp. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was helpful to you. And I hope to see you soon in future videos.